<laughs> I'm so excited to film this video. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This was one of my favorite videos to film last month and I know it wasn't anything crazy, it was kind of like a vlog almost, but we did a lot of book stuff together. We read, we bookshop, we did my reading journal, we talked, we hung out, I did some hauls. Like it was just a lot of my favorite things in one video, like with each other. So I'm really excited to be filming it again today. We're gonna be doing a little bit different this time. I'm not gonna be reading any book in this video, but we're gonna bookshop, we're gonna do my reading journal. I'm also gonna be redoing my shelves, which is really exciting. And we're gonna be talking and hanging out, you know? We're gonna hang out and do some book stuff together, which is literally, what is better than that? We're gonna take this day by day. Today we're going to be doing book shopping. Now how fun is that? We're starting this off on an amazing note. I am not going into the bookstore just looking around. I mean, I'm obviously gonna be looking around. Maybe something will catch my eye, but like I said, I'm trying not to buy too many books if I'm not gonna read them. And I have a lot of my TBR. And speaking of my TBR, I have two books that was chosen from my March TBR video. If you didn't see that, go check it out. But two books on there are books that I don't have physically. And I feel like I would enjoy reading them with the physical book instead of getting it on my Kindle or something. So we're gonna go to Barnes and we're gonna get those two books. They are The Unmaking of June Farrow and The Wishing Game. So two books that I feel like, honestly, I have high expectations for. I don't know why. I think The Wishing Game just because lots of besties have really thoroughly enjoyed this book and The Unmaking June Fair just because I don't know why I'm intrigued by it. I don't even know the summary of it but I feel like from what I've heard I guess I think I would enjoy it. I don't really know but two books that I'm very excited for. We're gonna go to Barnes. We're gonna grab them. I also while we're out I'm gonna run some errands. I have to return a pair of shoes from DSW that I don't want anymore and also we're gonna stop at Michael's which is right over there because I'm gonna buy a little scrapbook which we will talk about once we get to the reading journal section of this. I've been really excited about that. I feel like having a few days specified for my reading journal has been really helpful because I feel like if I wanted to update it throughout the month I'd get kind of like not bored with it but I feel like I wouldn't do it I would procrastinate it and then not do it so I feel like having these days especially in this video and doing it together makes me more excited like I'm waiting all month to do my reading journal get into like a relaxing zone because when I do my reading journal and I throw on that podcast or that audiobook there's nothing as relaxing as that so that's what we're starting with today let's go to Barnes let's go buy our few books maybe like another one Hopefully not to be honest. I don't really want to No, I always want to buy books, but like I don't need to so let's go to Barnes. Let's go buy our books I'm excited. I haven't been to Barnes in a little bit It is the next day. I went to Barnes yesterday and bad news. I didn't get any books. So I did see The Unmaking of June Farrow, but then when I was walking around with it, I noticed the bottom of it was kind of messed up a little. Like the sleeve of it and like the little edge of the hardcover was kind of bent around it. I just, it was bothering me. I don't know. I'm not usually picky about how my books like doing dog earring and stuff, but it was like kind of ripped and stuff and I just didn't want to buy that. So then I was looking for The Wishing Game and they didn't have that either. So I ended up just ordering them both from Amazon because I wanted to get them this week to put on my TBR and I didn't have time to go to the other Barnes which is like kind of 40 minutes away. It's kind of far. So didn't get those. I did order them. They should be here tomorrow. So we will have them in this video and I will be putting them on my TBR pile for the month. But that was a bummer. I was going to buy some other books, but then I was just getting overwhelmed because I was like, I came here for these books. I didn't get them. I shouldn't get other ones, but I wrote down some books that are on my radar. Yeah. So I didn't get any books. I, I left empty handed, which is always it's pretty sad, but it's okay. Then I ended up going to CVS and Staples. No, oh, not Staples. Michaels to get a little, I said scrapbook, but it's really a photo album, which I'll show you in a sec, but I printed out pictures. So I got this little digital camera a couple weeks ago. I feel like I got it like two-ish weeks ago. I got it off eBay. It's the Canon L100 something. I don't know. I found the name of it on TikTok and then I bought it and I really like it because it's pink and it's so cute, but it also takes really cute pictures. So I've been using that since my mom's birthday around that time, which was last week. 
I don't really know the timeline of this, but I've decided that every month I'm gonna be using this camera, obviously, and every month I'm gonna print out pictures from CVS of pictures that were taken and put them into a photo album because I really wanna do this with my Polaroid camera every month, but my Polaroid, I feel like I never really pick up. It's kind of bulky, and I feel like carrying this around has been so much easier. Like, I brought it everywhere with me this past weekend, which was Chris's birthday weekend, and I took pictures of, like, literally everything, so. I have pictures for my mom's birthday, Chris's birthday. I went book shopping for the last book shopping video that I did, and I took pictures there so i'm gonna put these like kind of like in order of timeline into this photo album so i got this one from michael's like i said and it is 100 pages you can put 200 pictures in four by six but what i liked about this one is the pattern was cute but a lot of them did just had spots where you can put pictures in but this one has little spots here that you can kind of write about the picture so i thought we could put the pictures in and then write like chris's birthday or mom's birthday or went out to eat something like whatever it is and put the date of when it was taken so that i'll have this and at the end of the year i could see kind of what happened throughout the year and i was gonna again do kind of like a scrapbooking with polaroids and stuff but i have my reading journal and i feel like that is enough of my creative scrapbooking this from my head into that i feel like that's just i like that better and i feel like this would be more just like a simple thing we can do so i thought we can do that together i'm gonna put all these photos in and then i'll show you the pictures that were taken and timelines and stuff and i feel like it's gonna be really cute to keep up with this so i'm going to throw on an audiobook i started listening to actually i'm reading a different book but i started to start listening to a different audiobook and i'm listening to the fury by alex mikalize because one i'm in a thriller mood two i needed a break from the book i'm reading just a little bit and three i recently have been in an audiobook mood as we know these past few months so with that being said i wanted to thank today's sponsor of the video which is audible which is so exciting if you guys have been here at all especially like i said the past few months i have been obsessed with audiobooks i can't stop i throw them on when i'm doing so many different things and i feel like i always have an audiobook going now so but it's so cool to have audible sponsoring today's video audible is the world's leader in audio entertainment audiobooks podcasts and audible originals it is the destination for storytelling that excites and transports listeners over the course of their daily lives lives. So like I said, I have been in a thriller mood and this is my favorite mood to be in. So there is nothing like getting caught up in almost like a terrifying, dangerous mystery slash thriller title and listening to it on Audible. I feel like it only enhances the experience, especially this genre. I feel like you're listening to the story and it almost feels real and it makes it like that much more of a creepy sense sometimes going on. I actually have a couple of this genre on my TBR for this month. Like I said, I started The Fury. I have First Lie Winds on my radar. I have Pretty Girls on my radar. I have a few mystery slash thrillers that I'm so excited to listen to. And like I said, I started The Fury yesterday and I'm a little bit into it, but I feel like it comes to life so intensely through the audiobook when you have someone kind of like speaking the story to you, doing the sound effects. Whenever I'm reading a book opposed to listening to it, I'm not really giving like voices or doing all these like fun things. So I feel like in audiobooks, it like brings the story to life. And if you have not tried Audible before and you are a new member, all new members can get a free trial of Audible. And if you are a member, you get full access to a growing selection of audiobooks. Books, audible originals podcasts and you can download all included titles anytime you want and like i said been in a thriller mood and audible has a must-hear collection of the latest and greatest that the thriller genre has to offer so if you are interested in getting into some thrilling type of audio or if you already do enjoy listening to audiobooks especially the mystery thriller genre highly recommend using audible and the titles that they have on there they are so amazing so as an audible member if you don't know you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog and that includes the latest bestsellers and new releases and my my favorite thing about audible is the app i click on this app probably every day it makes it so easy to listen while traveling working out walking your dog just going for walks doing laundry like i do so many little tasks and it is just my favorite thing to do my favorite way to listen to my audiobooks so if you guys are interested for a free trial of audible you can visit audible.com sarah crowley or text sarah crowley to 500 500 thank you audible again for sponsoring today's video i love audible so right now i'm actually going to open up my audible and i'm going to continue listening to the fury again i'm not like too far in right. but i'm gonna listen to that while i put in my little pictures into here and i will be back once i'm done to show what we've got going on
Okay, I just put all of the pictures in. Here's what we got. I'm gonna decorate this page at some point, but it just says Sarah's 2024. This is kind of what the pictures look like. This is me and my mom before her birthday. And then next to it, I have the date where we went to eat and like my mom's birthday. And then like I said, I went book shopping and I took some pictures on the camera. So I printed those out and I put like where the bookstores were. And I feel like looking back at this like years to come, I'm gonna be like, oh, like remember when that happened? Remember that bookstore? Remember book shopping? I don't know, I feel like it would be good to reminisce on. And then Chris's birthday weekend starts. So I put the date next to every single picture. And then I wrote like on the way to Chris's birthday surprise, we had a four hour drive. And that was this picture over here. I put the little birthday hat on and we put the birthday hat on Chris. And this was moments before the surprise. So I wrote that here. And I feel like, again, looking back on this in years, we're gonna be like, literally remember that moment, like five minutes before your friends walk in and you had no idea i think it's gonna be so fun and then we have some more pictures this was our first full day in the airbnb and we did some puzzles and then we went out to eat at this like really cool little spot it was in syracuse new york and they had a little game section in the back so we did like the big jenga game there was like darts and stuff and it was really fun and then this was the morning of his last day being 25 so i put or i took a picture of the balloons we went out to eat again so i took some pictures and i put kind of where we were and what we were doing the last night we were there before chris turned 25 we took some pictures doing face masks and i brought that down and then a couple hours before he turned 25 we put some candles in churros from the restaurant we were at because we brought those home and we had candles and we blew those out and that's the last picture i have for the month but i feel like every month while doing reading journals and like updating that i feel like i can update this with whatever pictures I took that month on my camera and I feel like it'll be nostalgic to look back on at the end of the year we'll do that together maybe it'll be really interesting to see all the pictures I've taken and especially like years to come just having this and I feel like I want to continue to do this every year and kind of just like write you know the year it is and if I have kids later in life you know they can look through this and I feel like that's just so fun I feel like it's a good time to start doing this so now that this is done I'm gonna go record podcast with destiny see you guys tomorrow for our next little step in this video it is time to fix up my book so if you have not seen my updated bookshelf or like I was reorganizing them I think it was I don't know I'll put a little picture of what video it was but that video I kind of set up how I want my bookshelves to look and that's how it's been this whole time but as we all do I just buy more books and more books accumulate and then my space is being taken up by more and more books and now I just have gotten to the point where there's not a lot of space for books that I've already read so I obviously have my TBR cart where I've been able to put books that I'm buying and I want to put on my TBR radar and I have a few shelves that are just like specific to my TBR and stuff but then I have some shelves of books that I've already read, which some under this window, this big tall bookshelf over here, and then this one, majority of the books I've read are here. But these are the ones that like some of them I don't talk about, I don't think about, and I really recommend, but I want to keep just for the sake of one day having a big library where like all of my books are there and just having like all this space to put all the books that I own. So I took some books out of here that I, again, don't talk about, don't recommend, probably won't really need, at least right now, like I took out some winter reads that I will talk about in December, but that's so long from now. So I moved them to a different spot in my house that I just don't need to have on these shelves right now. So these shelves, some of them are kind of empty and they're looking a little weird. So I thought we could do is reorganize these and then I have some books on the bottom of a TBR cart that weren't fitting anywhere because after I've been finishing books recently, like all of my February books that I read are kind of just thrown in a corner over here because I have no room to put them anywhere. What we're gonna do is reorganize these shelves over here and then we're going to put in some books that I recently read, have some space open and kind of reorganize, I think, my big tall bookshelf. Getting like overcrowded and I feel like now that I have at least a little bit of space to put some books, we're gonna be figuring this out together. So I think I'm gonna start with these shelves over here and kind of reorganize how I want them to look and maybe take some more books out that I don't really need to have on my shelves right now, but I wanna keep for future libraries. So let's get to this shelf right now. bookshelf is looking like right now I have a couple empty cubbies and a few spots I can put some books in but I kept a few on here that I don't know I just feel like I should keep I don't really know over here I have Tessa Bailey books that I wanted to put in here but they don't fit they don't have enough space and then I feel like on the bottom these two I, I'm still thinking about like I don't really need these ones on here because I don't really think about these but we'll see how that goes and then these three up here and down here are all of my like thrillers and mysteries I feel like I have enough space now to put some books I've already read or also kind of want to move some books from like 
my tall bookshelf so I can make that look a little bit neater. I feel like it's kind of cluttered right now. So I think the first thing I want to do is take some books that I've already read and move them over here and like make more space on my tall bookshelf or the bookshelves under my window. I'm just gonna do that. You'll see. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, the ones that I have left over from the past like month or so that I didn't have room for is my Crescent City books, If Only I Had Told Her and Bride, which are all like these authors are over there. So now we're gonna go over there. I still have space over here for some more books, which is really exciting, but we're gonna go over there and kind of fix up my tall bookshelf. I feel like, again, it's just so cluttered. I actually saw, I think a few weeks ago, what my bookshelf looked like when I first got this tall one. If you remember, there was like so much space on it, which is so amazing because that bookshelf is some of the books that I love and want to like put out and like kind of display almost. And it's like all filled up now, which I think is just like, what an amazing year since getting this tall bookshelf that I have so many books that I've read and like bought that I love so much that I want to display, you know? It's a wonderful thing, but let's go over there now. I'm gonna start with taking books off of here that I don't really want on this bookshelf or feel like need to be on this bookshelf anymore and then decide kind of how I want it situated. I feel like it definitely looks good. Like I like the way that it looks. I just feel like there's so many books on there. Like I don't really know. I'm gonna figure this one out and then I will explain my thought process. did to the tall bookshelf in a few minutes but I have some books left over and that is the Lachlan Feud series which I had up there because I really love the way the spines look together they make kind of like a crown on the spines which I think is really beautiful I love these covers but I just you know I had to pick and choose which books I wanted to keep up there that wouldn't make it look again cluttered and then I have Lauren Asher books which makes me really sexy I loved love redesign like so much and I did enjoy my time reading the series and I like having all of these books together especially just like having the same author together so we're gonna have to figure out where to put these two I don't want to like separate them like I couldn't just keep love redesigned up there I mean I guess I could but I don't really want to do that and then we have Juniper Hill and Indigo Ridge which was honestly just in there because again I had no room this was like one of the last books that could fit on this shelf. I think these just shouldn't be on that bookshelf. I gave them both like three stars and then I really wanted to put Seven Year Slip on there and kind of display it, which I feel like it's possible I might be able to. So I'm gonna keep this on the side, but couldn't fit that one right now. And then I took off Done and Dusted and Picking Daisies on Sundays. These ones are hurting me because the covers are just like so, so cute. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to figure this out. But the last one that just couldn't fit on here because these books are ginormous is the Crescent City series. And like I've said while reading these, I just don't really love the series like too much and I do want to keep my Saturday Mass books together so I'm gonna try to figure out a way to get these on this shelf but right now they're not fitting there so I'm gonna put some on the shelves over here and then maybe like rearrange a little bit of what's going on over here and see what I can do. what it looks like right now at the very top the newer covers of the magnolia park series so that's gonna stay at the top i think it looks cute next to the plant up there and then my little hanging crochet underneath it i didn't have space for the new covers next to the old one so they're staying up there but i kept this top row pretty much the same my powerless over here which when the new books come out i'm gonna have space to put the newer books because i put this little dvr jar that i don't really use ever anymore but i keep this in here just in case i want to use it and just like fill up some space between books and then and this one I already had but it was this one underneath it but I wanted to put it here because over here I originally had like I actually don't remember I think it was Six of Crows and Battle Never After and like the Once Upon a Broken Heart series but I think that these books look prettier over here I kept Done and Dusted here because I want to get the second one and I just saw the cover reveal for the third one and I just can't get over these covers I think they're so pretty so I'm gonna keep this one here and I guess just put the series as it comes I don't really know but that's what it looks like 
right now. And then underneath here, next to Once Upon a Broken Heart series, like I said, it used to be Crooked Kingdom and Six of Crows, but I switched that up because these covers are so pretty, like the pinks and the purples, that I wanted something pretty next to it. So I wanted to put these Magnolia Parks original spines over here. I feel like they're really pretty, and I have this little bee that I feel like needs to be on top of it. So I put that there. The only thing is I just got the new cover of, well, the old versions of the covers, but the new book that came out, Into the Dark, the original cover design. But I had to get the different version of it, so this is like so much bigger than these ones. Look how much bigger the difference is if I put this one with this one. Also, I have two Magnolia Parks because one, Bestie Ellie actually, before I even read it, she sent it to me annotated, which is like one of my favorite things that I own because it's one of my favorite books and I got it before I even knew I loved the book and she annotated the whole thing for me and it was so sweet. So I have these two copies here, but this one is just so big. Like, like look at that. That does not look right. So I think I may put it next to it. I feel like that looks good because I feel like putting it underneath it, it's like way too big. So I think the spine is really pretty of these original covers so i'm gonna keep these ones like this with the bee and the flower and then i have this cover of the ballad of never after and then i have these two versions of it because these covers like i was never really into buying like other versions of books that i already had i just never really wanted to do that but then i read this series or i just read the first two and i saw all these other editions of it and they were just like too pretty not to get so i have all of these ones and i might put my little lemon over here too i'm like trying to put back all like the little things that were in here because i also had these cherries which i need to hang i'm gonna put it around the flower like that okay moving down here we have my sarah j mass shelf so the throne of glass series was is it upside down no it's not i don't know why that looks so weird for a second but the throne of glass series was originally like stacked like this but didn't fit kingdom of ash on top of it because the kingdom of ash is just way too thick and it just like didn't fit so i had this next to it but i didn't like the way it looked so i put them this way so that they're all next to each other in order and then we have the akatar series here with my dorian candle which should be on top of there but that doesn't fit so we're gonna put it here and since the crescent city books didn't fit over here i wanted to keep them in the same area as the other sajay mass books i felt like it was just not right to put them on a whole different shelf so i made space over here and I put them stacked here with a little candle and then my six of crows books and editions are over here so I'm gonna put my jelly cat and my croissant and then on the bottom I have my addicted books over here the white covers and then I have like these kind of like original Callaway sisters over here I wanted to keep these together as well and since I wanted to keep them together I couldn't put them on like a higher shelf because I do like the white spines of these like addicted books but since I have the ones with the people on them for the Callaway sisters it just doesn't look good keeping them all together but having different editions I do have the kiss the sky newer edition but that one is the only one I have of, like the newer ones that came out and then I have my Abby Jimenez books over here. I didn't know what to put over here, but I do love Abby Jimenez books and there's a new one coming out that I'll probably put over here. I just didn't have space on any other shelf to move that around, but I'm feeling a lot better of what this looks like. I think it looks really pretty and I feel like it's just nice to change it up sometimes because it's been the same way since I originally made it. I've just been adding more books to it, not really like redoing it too much. So this is what she looks like and then we have my TBR cart over here, but if you see this stack over here, there's something going on here and I don't know what to do with these. Over here I have my Lucy Square books, which there's a lot of them and I had the ones that I already read on the shelf over here and kind of had them separated between the ones I've read and the ones I didn't read and this is like the only author I don't really want to split up I mean I have, don't want to split up like Sarah J Mass and stuff but I've read those but for this one I feel like usually I'll have my TBR books on a separate shelf than the ones I've read even if it's a different author I just like to have them separated so I can see but I have so many of her books that I don't really want to do that and I don't want to separate them so I don't know where to put them there's like literally no space for this many books so they're staying over here and then I have this copy of Magnolia Parks the original cover because I was annotating it me and my friends were gonna like pass it around and annotate it but I got this far and haven't continued so I need to do that and then I have my never book but I didn't know where to put these because I have Magnolia Parks up there but I again want to keep authors together so it's gonna be right up here just for now until I figure out what to do with these books on this little corner over here I might need to get like just like a little mini shelf or maybe I'll get like floating shelves I thought about doing that on top of like over there my little night stand has like a blank wall above it so I thought about doing some floating shelves but I don't really know so let me know if you have any ideas of like where to put extra space for books without having like to get a bookshelf because I don't have any room for bookshelves anymore but I want to like have space to put books but I guess maybe in like a creative way I'm trying not to put too many on top of the bookshelves either because I feel like it gets cluttered there as well I'll usually just put the books that are on my TBR for the month on top so I can like visually see like what I'm supposed to be reading that month but that's really it so that is the updated bookshelf stuff going on if you guys want an actual bookshelf tour 
and I'll go through every single book that are on these shelves and the setup of them, which I feel like you've seen majority through this video and I feel like other ones, like I haven't really changed it since last time, but if you wanna see an updated one, let me know. I'm feeling better. I feel like it's less cluttered. I still have more space on the shelves under my TV to put books that I've read and I'll just keep moving books around as the time goes on and I'm reading more books. I'm gonna clean up my room, eat something, and I'll be back once we do the spreads and the reading journal for the end of February and like set it up kind of for March. It has been a bit. I ate, I had a meeting. That's actually all I've done since we've talked. Before we do all of that, I have some stuff. I want to give like a haul, a collective haul over the past few weeks because we all know I like to shop. We all know I like to buy things and I like to give hauls like to anyone in my life. Like Chris gets all the hauls usually, but I especially like to show you guys because I feel like we have the same liking in things and I feel like we appreciate, you guys appreciate my hauls. Chris appreciates them, but like he doesn't get it. Like he's not going to go out and buy the bookish merch that I'm showing. You know what I mean? Let me show you the stuff that I've gotten over the past few weeks. The first one being exciting because it is, like I just said, bookish merch. These sweatshirts that I got were so kindly sent to me. She has these bookish ones and they are so cute. This is the first one. It's always just a stack of books, but I think it's so cute. And they're all just like really soft and really comfortable. And then I got this one. It says, take me to the bookstore. And I've been really loving wearing the color pink, as we can tell. This one, adorable. It says a bookish girly and it's another stack of books, but this one, look at that little bow attached to the books. This is so cute. And then I also got this little bookish one. It has little stacks of books and of course some bows on it. I don't really know what's going on with me and the bows. It has taken over my life. I just think they are so cute. You put them on anything and they're just like, it just makes things cuter. I don't know why I'm obsessed with them, but I like the tan with the pink and the little book stacks on this one. And then the last one I got is on this pretty, pretty blue color. This one's not bookish, but it says East Coast Summer. You don't even know how ecstatic I I am for when I'm tan in the summer to throw this on. I don't know why in the summer I still wear these big sweatshirts, but I wear them with like shorts underneath it. And when you're just like coming home from the beach and you're tan, you have like that fresh shower after the beach and you just throw one of these on. There's simply nothing like it. So again, I will link these all down below. They're from Coastal Chic by Anna. Next thing, speaking of summer, I actually over my, was it my, not my birthday. My birthday's in June. When did I go to the city? Valentine's Day. We went to the city and I shopped a little bit and we went to Aritzia and I don't know why. It literally snowed the day before, but they had so much stuff. I guess they put out their spring stuff, but I went a little crazy. I kept thinking like, yeah, this will be cute in the summer. And like this shirt will be cute in the summer. And we're literally in February when I was shopping for this. But look how cute this little tank top is. Are we kidding? It is extremely soft and I feel like this is a little pair of jean shorts. Like I'm just like really envisioning summer outfits right now. It's all I've been looking at on Pinterest too. I don't know why. I think I'm just over the winter. So then I got this really cute tank top. It's kind of like not a thin material. I don't really know what material this is, but I like that it has these little hanging things off of it. It's like flowy. I think this with the pair of jeans, little sandals or something. I don't know. I think it'd be so cute. And then one of my favorite things from Aritzia are their basics. I feel like they have really good basics. So I got a little tube top, but this is like the new ribbed one that they have. My favorite tube top that I own is from Aritzia and it's black. And it's like this really nice material. It's like, it fits really nice and it feels really nice. Like not uncomfortable, it stays up. So I saw this one and I kind of had to get it because I don't have any white tube tops and I'm really excited about it. So that's my summer haul. Hope we're all excited for summer to come because I am ecstatic. Like I need some warm weather. I need to go sit on a beach and I need to feel better. I just feel like when the sun is out, I feel better and it's been so so cloudy. And then my last little haul is stuff I got from my P.O. box last week. I actually unboxed other bookish merch that I got from Jordan Jayco, which I will insert right here because one of my favorite bookish merch little shops ever. Little intermission from Future Sarah here. I just got a package and it's from one of my favorite Instagram shops that make bookish stuff. So I thought to have some little clip to include to show what I got. I have no idea what I got. I didn't order anything, but I'm so excited to see what I got sent. So I thought we should open it together. Also, the bag is adorable. You guys can use code. <coughs> okay. You guys can use code Sire15 if you want to shop on here, but let me show you what I got. I already see the little designs and they're so cute. <laughs> I react like this to any kind of bookish merch. I don't know why it does something to me. Also, just people being so kind to just send me bookish merch. It warms my heart seeing this stuff. It's so cute. Hey, maybe I should just show you. Okay, this one says cowgirl era. <gasps> but look at the print. Is that not the cutest thing ever? It's a pink cowboy. I'm so excited about this one. This one in the summer. I'm ecstatic about this one. This one is so cute. This one says book lover. Oh my god, look at the cherries. And this is my favorite like gray type of sweatshirt that I get. Like the ash gray. You can wear it literally with anything. It's so cute. Oh my god, how adorable. There's one more. Which I already see there's a bow embroidered onto it. So I know I'm gonna like be obsessed with this. Also this blue. Stunning. Bows are a girl's best friend. Oh, that is the cutest 
cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Thank you so much. She has such cute stuff. She's also so sweet. This is the best thing ever. I have to throw one on now. I think I'm gonna put on, how do you choose? Wait, how do you choose which one to wear? I think I gotta wear this one today. Bows are a girl's best friend. Let's put this on. <gasps> I'm obsessed. Oh, and it's so soft and so comfy and it's perfect. Thank you so much. Oh my God, so cute. I love them. So now that I have so much new bookish merch, this stuff I opened last week for my PO box, but I really wanted to put it in a video because I got the sweetest, sweetest package I think I have ever received ever. Like you have no idea. I opened this and I started completely tearing up. Like I just did not expect it. It's from Bestie Cheyenne. And first I opened the package and all I saw was this book, which is The Unbecoming of Maya Dot. No. Mara Dyer, is that her name? By Michelle Hodkin. So all I saw was this book, some notes and friendship bracelets and I was like, this is the kindest package ever. Every time I open a package that I get for my PO box, I'm just like, you guys are so sweet. So then I start reading the letter and this is just one of the sweetest, most like personal letters I've ever received from one of you guys. I'm keeping this in this book forever and this is like one of my new prized possessions because it's one of her favorite books and she took the time to annotate it for me. Like she... Why is this gonna make me tear up? She annotated it for me, like fully, tabs, writing, and everything. She wrote me a little playlist for the book, and like this note, I just really resonated with it, because it's like crazy. I've never, Cheyenne, if you're watching, we have never met, but I can connect to you and relate to you just from your little letter, and this book like a crazy amount. So, if you're watching, I'm gonna thank you again. I opened this package, also the cutest friendship bracelets ever, and I just was like tearing up. I was like, this is, there's no way someone is this nice to me. So. If you're watching, thank you, bestie. And then another bestie, Madison, actually sent me a package and it had bookmarks in it and a little card, which is just so cute. I'm keeping this forever, of course. But some of these bookmarks are just so sweet. Like there's one of me and Chris on the bookmark. There is Throne of Glass one. She put some of the Throne of Glass men in little candy hearts. Like just the cutest things ever. But she also in the package sent Mochi a little toy and little, not treats, but little things she can eat to help out like her joints and stuff. Because I did mention in the video that mochi's back legs or it's really her spine like they're affecting her back legs and i lost it so madison if you're watching thank you bestie again so sweet another incredible thoughtful one of the nicest things ever and then i got some bookmarks from amanda which i've actually received bookmarks from her before and they are always the cutest bookmarks ever there's a harry styles one and then this one says enemies to lovers but make it romanticy there is a folklore taylor swift one and then the last one says on thursdays we listen to bookmarked which is really really cute a bunch of stickers a little harry polaroid like whenever i open some of these packages there's always like stickers stickers involved that are just like so cute and so sweet that I'm like so excited to put in my reading journal and behind my kindle case and uh, on my cork board like I just it really makes me want to cry because everyone is just so sweet and thank you if you've ever sent me anything if you sent me these I have my reading journal here now I'm gonna go fill out right now like the simple ones that I already have kind of spread the 24 books I want to read in 2024 my library the amount of books I read in February my series tracker my favorite book of the month the reading challenge this other reading challenge like the alphabet one I got snack I got water I got my audiobook my reading journal and we're ready to go we're ready to start coloring not coloring you know filling things in surprised I can't figure out how to use my printer. I don't know how to connect it to my phone or my computer. I tried googling it. I don't know why this happens every time. Not every time. I bought this last time we did this video, but I can't connect it. Last time it wasn't working on my computer, so I went on my phone to print and it worked like it connected really easily, but I don't know what's going on, why it's not connecting. I don't know how to use it. I'm not a printer wizard. I just don't understand printers, like at all. I'm honestly surprised I successfully even set the thing up, so... I just texted Chris and he's gonna be like, "How? Wh what makes you think I know how to do this? But 
for some reason i feel like he would know so we're waiting to see if someone can help me but while we're waiting i ended up doing the little spreads that i said that i was gonna fill out so i didn't read too much from my 24 books to read in 2024 i only read bride by ali hazelwood and nectar of war and then i read i think it was 13 books and it had two dnfs but i'm not including dnfs into this the only one that's kind of like an empty book space there's two of them over here because there were two books in february that i didn't rate so they're not colored in but this is what this is looking like so far if you didn't know how this is kind of set up i kind of talked about it in my last video but each rating that i give a book has a specific color that is on my key over in the front so like on this bottom here every rating has a color and i kind of just color code it this way and then over here the books that i read in february were 13 and honestly i'm loving this i didn't realize how much i was gonna love like visually seeing next to each other because last month i read 12 books and like seeing this little bar graph like go up and down each month i think it's gonna be really fun so really enjoying that that one i feel like i'm screaming because my headphones are on i'm sorry if i'm screaming but i'm listening to the audiobook right now and i just don't feel like taking these off <laughs> and then my series tracker i did start stalking jack the ripper series i don't remember other ones i started in february but i didn't add them on here because they're not like priority series here is more of like series i really want to get to this year and i'd be happy to but the stalking jack the ripper series i don't really i'm not in any like rush to continue it so i didn't add that but i did continue the fake out from vancouver storm series and then also the bromance book club i read the second one in that series my favorite book from each month the picture will go right here once i can figure out this printer but it's crazy because I guess I didn't have too great of a reading month like I did read a good amount of books and I had a good time reading the books that I did but I didn't have any like books I absolutely loved in February so my favorite book of the month was actually The Fake Out which is part of the Vancouver Storm series the first one was Behind the Net so that one is gonna go here which I feel like is really telling that that's my favorite book out of the whole month it's just like a fast-paced hockey romance like it was nothing like too crazy but I think that was my favorite and then over here is my reading challenge these are kind of like almost like TBR prompts time I did male author I read No Exit and then author you love i read bride by ellie hazelwood i love her books even though bride wasn't my favorite i still like absolutely love her writing i'm trying not to fill out too many because we have 12 months to go and i feel like i'll be able to fill out a bunch of these as the year goes on so i'm trying to do like one or two each month and then we have the alphabet reading challenge i don't know how many i filled out this month i only did i think one i put undercover bromance for you because i feel like i don't know how many books start with you that one felt like i should use that i feel like once we get to like v x y z like maybe not y but i'm gonna have to fill those out because i don't know if there's gonna be too many repeating books with that letter at the end of the spread from last year i did a little collage of pictures that i printed from my january and like things i did in january and put little stickers with that and i think that's really cute but like i said i have my digital camera and my not scrapbook photo album that i'm trying to do now instead so i'm glad that i did this before getting the disposable camera and starting that because in that photo album it starts in february so i at least have this to kind of go back on and see how my january went but pictures i think i'm just gonna stick with doing the photo album and maybe sometimes i'll do a little fun collage if i have lots of pictures to do but most of february i feel like i don't really have too many pictures of i feel like the photo album is doing really well with this so i don't think i'm gonna do this again unless i have like an urge to but it was fun last month to do kind of like pictures of how my month one. and then we have my february spread over here which honestly is so cute i forgot how cute this was i did a little mailbox with like love letters going around and like my little tbr and if you didn't watch my tbr video for march i actually said and announced i guess that i finished my whole entire february tbr which has never happened before i actually did a little prediction if you guys remember from last video of braiding i thought i was going to give each book and honestly i was not too far off of like guessing how i think i'm going to rate books so this one was really fun i'm excited to do this spread again so i also think i'm going to make a page for my dnfs of the year i think i saw in rachel's is it her reading journal i think bestie rachel did is it dnf graveyard or something like that where you put like all of your dnfs for the year and like all the books that you didn't obviously end up reading so i think i'm gonna do one of those pages I'm gonna figure out my printer so i can fill out and print all these pictures do my march spread my march tbr my dnf and all that so i'm gonna get to coloring i'm gonna get to listening i'm gonna get to eating i can't stop eating these from trader joe's the dark chocolate covered mini pretzels addicting literally so good for what
honestly took me way longer than I thought, but I found a spread on Pinterest for, I think it was like a January spread, but I kind of combined it with a March spread that I saw because I saw that it was bows and I wanted to do bows, of course. This is what I have come up with for my March spread. So I did March like in little script and then like in the background kind of like a bigger march and then i put little bows but i thought it turned out really cute so i have that and now i'm gonna do march tbr on this side i don't really have an idea for this one so i'm gonna figure that out and then i will show you what i come up with still haven't figured out the printer so i'm gonna have to figure that out eventually Press print? No, I don't have to do anything on the printer. My paper is in. Why does it sound so There's weird? There's no paper? No, I have paper right here. Oh. See, you have a lot of stuff to print. <laughs> Yay! Good mm -hmm. job. Good job. <laughs> Good job. That was crazy. This printer is annoying, but I'm gonna go print everything now. I did the TBR. So I did little kind of like flowers at the bottom and I did the same type of like wording over here. And I'm gonna put pictures of the different books here, but I printed out the books I read in February. And I did the DNF page. I did kind of random. I looked it up on Pinterest just to see like a kind of a little DNF outline and I kind of just copied from Pinterest. It's not the best thing I've ever seen. It's not the really best spread, my favorite spread, but it's just blue and purple. And I left this one blank because I don't know what to put here. And I wanted to have two pages for the TBR and the wrap up. So not the wrap up, like the beginning of March. So let me know what I should put on this side. If I should make like another DNF page. I don't really feel like I DNF that much. I feel like I've DNF three books since the year started. So I feel like I'm not going to have too many in here. So so let me know what you think I should put on this blank page over here. But I'm gonna go print, cut, glue, all that fun stuff, and I will show you guys what I've done when I finish. filling out the parts that I had left from the things I needed to print out. You know, when I said this was therapeutic, it truly was. I think I just sat here for, I don't even know how many hours it was. I texted Chris to help me with the printer at 2.50. It's now 4.45, so it's been a couple hours and I just, something about doing this is gonna relax me. Like that's what it's gonna do. It's going to relax me. Like I said, I filled out all these other little prompts that I had, but I put my favorite read from February in here, which was the fake out. Last month, if you guys remember, I only printed out a few books that I read that month not all of them which I don't know why I did that and this was kind of like the spread I did for the books that I read and then I put the books from each video which I want to do this sometimes but that's not what I did this month put my TBR for the month and I put the ratings that I think I'm gonna give them so we have wait just kidding that's February 
hold on. I put the books that I read in February. Let's do that first. So I did it this way. I printed out little mini pictures of each book that I read and kind of the order that I did. I put the name and the author and the genre and then a little bit of what I thought about it and the little rating underneath. And I kind of color coded each one, which I think is kind of cute. I think this page and these pages could be a little bit more interesting, you know, put like stickers or something on it. It's kind of simple, but I think it's cute. So I did these for the books that I read and obviously all my thoughts and ratings are in my wrap up from February, but here's the next page, the rest of the books. And then I just put the two reading vlogs that I did this month, just printed them out just so I can like visually see what I did that month for like my videos. Some of these books were in. And then flipping over, we have the DNF. So I have these two from January. I DNF'd the game plan, which I didn't print out to put in here. I completely forgot and I have no paper left. So next month, if I remember, if I DNF anything else or hopefully I remember, I'll print that out and put that in there as well. Our March spread. I'm actually like obsessed with this. I think it's so cute. I love the way that it turned out. It looks a little chaotic, but I think it's cute. I put the little rating guesses and I actually feel like I'm going to have a pretty good month because all of these are four or above except for one. So we have one day, I think I'm going to give four stars. We have the unmaking of June Farrow. I think I'm going to give four and a half. The wishing game, I also think I'm going to give four and a half, which are two of my like most anticipated, I think for the month. First line wins, I think I'm going to give four. The way I said B, I think I'm going to give four. The fury, I think I'm going to give three. I'm not too sure why. It's just like my inkling that I have right now. And then red rising, I think I'm going to give four. So we have some pretty hopeful writings for this month. Fingers crossed it goes as well as I think it will when I read these books. That's it until next month when we fill out the rest of our March books and we'll have all my ratings and all my thoughts, which is gonna be really fun. I absolutely love doing this. So I think that is all from today. I will be back tomorrow with, I think the last thing we're gonna do is go by Swift and Saddled. We gotta get back to Barnes and Noble because I forgot that, that came out this month. So I'll see you guys tomorrow at Barnes. Where my new shoes? Hello guys, it is now Saturday and I don't think I've recorded since Thursday, but yesterday I didn't do much. I did get my hair done. Let me know if you guys like it. I went a little bit more red. Yesterday I ended up going to Barnes and yes I got Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. This is the second book after Done and Dusted. I love this cover so much. It's just cute. I love it. So I think I'm gonna start this today just as a kind of like a buffer between books that I'm reading right now and it's really short. It's only like 280 ish pages so I feel like this is one I can read and binge and get through it pretty fast and I'm excited because I loved the first one. It's just like your good old cowboy romance really short really sweet and then like I said I ordered on Amazon The Wishing Game and The Unmaking of June Farrow. This one delivered but then I checked and the other one wasn't delivering and there was no like delivery date so I canceled it so I'm gonna read the wishing game on Kindle and this or I'll buy it eventually my Barnes doesn't have it Target doesn't have it Amazon's being weird so right now I'm gonna read it on Kindle but eventually I'll probably end up buying it but here we have what should be the unmaking of June Farrow. I did end up getting the paperback version and that was like on Amazon as an option. And if there's a paperback option, I'm gonna get it even if it's like a bigger size. So compared to Swift and Saddle, this is like a hardcover size, but in paperback. So it's pretty big in comparison, but I just don't like holding a hardcover. So I got the paperback, it's just bigger. So I'm gonna add this to the TBR pile for this month and hopefully get to it soon. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really love filming these each month. I'm so excited already to film the next one. The reading journal, the book shopping, kind of looks like book updates, I guess, and like situating myself for the following month, especially reading journal wise. Let me know if you guys enjoyed. I hope you did. And I will see you hopefully in the next one. Bye.